Greetings everyone and welcome to another question and answer session. Okay, so we've got another question today. Um, this question is a very important question. Um, it's under the subject of angels, but I also want to express that there's been a lot of controversy when it comes towards this question. And that is the subject of Michael the Archangel. So let's look at the question and see exactly what the question is. I've heard people say Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel, which makes no sense to me because Jesus is not an angel. But I have heard some people express that it doesn't mean he is an angel. I'm quite confused about it, but maybe your ministry can help answer this question. I'd be interested to see what you believe based on the Bible. Thanks, look forward to your answer. Thank you very much for that question. Like I did mention, it is quite a controversial question because of the, <laughs> based upon the question that you've just asked, because people have said this, but then they have another meaning of what this could mean. And it could just drift into other things, which obviously deviates from what the original question is. So what we're going to do is we're going to answer this question based upon using the Bible and the Bible alone and see exactly what we come across when it comes towards Michael the Archangel. Now I just want to briefly state my own reasoning based upon what I've studied before we head into it just so that you know where I stand on this question. Um, based upon the question is Jesus Christ Michael the Archangel, from what I've studied and from what I've examined which I'm going to show you I believe that Jesus Christ is actually Michael the Archangel, but I'm going to explain my reason based upon the Bible and you can leave your comments just so that we can reason or if we can grow together based upon the answer that I'm going to give. Now first of all, I want to express that and I can understand why people say, well Jesus can't be Michael the Archangel because Jesus is not an angel. And obviously this is the kind of question that I had in my mind before I actually started to believe this. But then I had to understand these things for myself and come to the realization that because the word angel is mentioned people start to drift into a preconceived idea but again based upon my study i've seen that you know the, the word angel isn't specifically aimed at angelic flying beings but rather it actually goes into more of a deeper meaning and we're going to see this expressed with jesus christ and also john the baptist notice this verse in malachi chapter 3. malachi chapter 3 verse 1 says behold i will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me and the lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in behold he shall come save the lord of hosts now i'm using this verse because this is a reference to john the baptist and also to jesus christ based upon further study now for jesus he's known as the messenger of the covenant and also for john he's known as the messenger now if you look up the hebrew word for the word messenger notice what it means it comes from this hebrew word called malak which means a messenger specifically of god that is an angel so just to kind of break away the preconceived notion that an angel is an angelic being that flies through the realms of heaven is actually more specifically towards being a messenger okay so please bear that in mind because an angel does not necessarily mean an angelic being but it can also mean a messenger all right now we're going to head into the part where, we, where we're going to talk about michael as the archangel being jesus christ um, i'm going to use this biblical method which will help you understand why i came to this conclusion now it's taken from the book of isaiah chapter 28 notice what it says isaiah chapter 28 verse 9 and 10 says whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Now we're going to cover this subject about um, you know, precept upon precept, line upon line, etc. in our How to Study the Bible series. And we're going to go through that in more depth. But for now, we're going to use this principle and I'm going to show you how I came to the conclusion that Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel. Especially using the verse where it says, here a little, there a little. So just to briefly give you an example of what this verse actually means, it actually simply means that the Bible explains itself. You may get a little bit here, but another passage will open up what this passage meant. So you're using the Bible to explain itself. Okay, so let's start to use the Bible to explain itself to answer this question, is Jesus Christ Michael the Archangel? And we're gonna start in the book of Jude chapter one. Jude chapter one verse nine says, 
Yet Michael the archangel when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses durst not bring against him a rallying or railing accusation but said the Lord rebuke thee. Okay so what we've just read here in Jude chapter 1 verse 9 is that we've seen that Michael is referred to as the archangel angel okay so just bear that in mind Michael is known as the archangel there's no other place in the Bible where um, there's another mention of an archangel it's only specifically aimed at Michael okay so now let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and let's see some further detail and we're going to see exactly what this notion is bringing out about Michael 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 and 17 says for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord okay so with the principle of here a little there a little precept upon precepts line upon line do we see some extra information based upon what we just read we saw some extra information indeed Jude tells us that Michael is known as the archangel and first Thessalonians chapter 4 tells us that the archangel has a voice and the voice of the archangel raises the dead all right so Jude tells us that Michael is known as the archangel and the archangel's voice according to first Thessalonians chapter 4 raises the dead okay that's the extra information that we've received now when we put those two verses together I want you to notice what it says in John chapter 5 and John chapter 5 is talking about the exact same event as first Thessalonians chapter 4 when the dead shall rise notice what it says John chapter 5 verse 25 says verily verily I say unto you the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. Okay, so just based upon this verse um, and all the verses that we've read, let's now put everything together. So Jude tells us that Michael is the archangel and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 tells us that the voice of the archangel raises the dead. So you put those two together and we see that the voice of Michael the archangel raises the dead. And lastly talking about the same event of um, regarding the raising of the dead in John chapter 5 instead of the voice of the archangel we're told that the voice of the son of God raises the dead. So just through this biblical rule we can clearly see and I'm sure you can clearly see it as well that Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel. So first of all, based upon the context that we've understood and the premises that we've um, knocked down, Michael the Archangel doesn't necessarily mean that Jesus is an angel. In fact, if you break up the word Archangel, it means the highest messenger. The word Michael means who is like God. So you have the highest messenger who is like God. Now that's just another extra part because I just want to aim specifically at the question and answer it from the Bible but I wanted to also just bring a bit of extra information and the reason why I want to bring this extra information is because I don't want people kind of learning things and then just running off with it. I want us to see what lesson or what principle are we to know just by understanding that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. So what practical lesson are we supposed to know and experience based upon understanding that Jesus is Michael the Archangel? Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, Thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book of life. You see friends, the Bible refers to a time of trouble that was never experienced since there was a nation. And based on Bible prophecy, we are very, very, very close to that time of trouble, which is going to happen very soon. Now this time of trouble has a lot of avenues when it comes to our studying. But if you want to know more information about this time of trouble, you can read Revelation chapter 16 and that will express exactly what this time of trouble is going to be. And you also have other passages like Revelation chapter 13, Revelation chapter 14, and it just shows exactly the kind of trouble that's going to happen to this earth and the question is are we going to be able to be secure during that time and this is why I like to understand the practical lessons when understanding certain things because the verse says that Michael will stand up for the people of God which means during that time of trouble we know that Jesus Christ is going to be the one protecting us 
every step of the way through that time of trouble. And if Jesus Christ is the one standing up for his people, which also means interceding for his people, we need to know, will Jesus Christ win in the battle against Satan? When it comes towards this time of trouble, will we be secure knowing that Satan's going to try and destroy us while Jesus is also going to try to defend us? Well, notice this verse and see the result of when Satan tries to attack Jesus or Michael. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. So friends, we just seen in Revelation chapter 12 that when Jesus fought Satan in heaven, Satan had no chance against Jesus Christ, which means in the time of trouble, Satan will have no chance to destroy God's people. Okay, so I really hope that that's answered your question in a nutshell. Again, we're not saying Jesus Christ is an angel. We've already established that, that an angel doesn't mean an angelic being, but it means a messenger. But we're going to go into further more questions, which are going to come up very soon. But for now, I thank you for the question that you've asked. And I hope that this question has been answered based upon the Bible. So again, if you want to ask any more questions, if you have any, any questions that come to mind, you can leave them in the comments box below. You can leave them in our Facebook page, which is in the links below. And we'll answer the questions for you based upon the Bible. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I will see you in the next question and answer session. Keep studying your Bibles and always make sure that the Bible is the only source of rule and practice. Okay, God bless. Bye for now.